More than half of all companies globally are family-owned or operated. Family businesses contribute 70% of the world's GDP and account for 65% of jobs. Their voices are important. Their stories must be told. Brought to you by the award-winning publication, Tharavat Magazine. This is the Family Business Voice with your host, Ramya Elagami. Welcome everyone to the Family Business Voice. Our team at Tharawat Magazine is so excited to announce the official launch of our new podcast. We created this podcast in order to inspire you with family business stories and make sure the voices of these unique entrepreneurs who create lasting legacies are heard. Today, we're starting it off with a bit of a mashup, with short quotes from some of our most inspiring interviews, so you may know what kind of content we'll expect you over the next few months. Please subscribe to our podcast, either on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or TuneIn, or just sign up to our newsletter on the website to be notified of new episodes. Enjoy and get inspired. Sometimes when family businesses go, oh, well, you know, the best form of customer experience is, is just a smiling human interface and it has to be from the person who has the surname that is the same one as on the door, they're wrong. The technological solution, when it's designed correctly, can be even more loyalty building than anything we could offer via paperwork or a smiling human interface. You know, in a way, for my analog traditionalist soul, they're very heartening because I do believe that, you know, any brand, including family businesses, can, can code for more humanity by using technology. And that, if anything, will ensure their future and the technology can help it live on. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much that I changed the branding strategy. It's that there really wasn't one. Mm. You know, it just it was it was a vacuum. Uh, they had the most archaic web page that you could ever have seen, and you know, they had like a brochure that looked like we were operating some nuclear facility, <laughs> it had a grey factory on a red background. Um, honestly, uh, I mean, we should almost we should almost sort of post images about. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's that's amazing. <laughs> but it, it didn't represent the kind of business that we were because mm-hmm. it was a group of real people making real things in a lovely factory in, in a sort of rural town in England. You know, it was, yeah. it's, it was a great story and I, I could see that. As with any family business, when you are at the dining table, you, you talk about businesses. So always sort of been involved and, and deeply exposed to it and if there was ever a question that my father was grappling with he would always pose it to all of us and say well what do you think we were all four already exposed to to the questions that arise so in that sense I think that always knew that I wanted to go into business and and really I'm a big believer in the impact that business can make sometimes I wake up before my alarm clock and you think well I've got this amazing opportunity, but I also have a a meaningful responsibility to the team that I work with. I mentioned our very hands-on approach has meant that our growth has actually been remarkably slow. I look at some companies that are around today and 10 years ago, they didn't even exist. If I think it's taken us 120 years to be as small as we are, we've actually been hell of a slow. But the fact that we're not a big group now suits us and it suits our hands-on style and we can only manage so much. We're all grateful that we're not a big listed company that's desperate to answer to shareholders. One of the things that was unique was that the house my dad grew up in, my grandfather's house, sat on the east side of our four acres of property. The house my grandfather built that my father lived in and I grew up in sits on the west side of that property and the business sat in between them. So for the first, well, basically 58 years of my life, I lived in one of 
for those two houses other than for two years during college. Hmm. And so one thing I took for granted was I knew exactly what my father did for a living because I could come home from school for lunch, run up and go in my dad's office and spring break. And in the summer, he would take us off on jobs and I would see what they were doing, get the help. And I got the call that said, we need somebody who can come in, who can really have a strong pulse on our employee morale. And I said, you know what? I can do this. I will be the best person at this point in time for this role. Mm -hmm. And it would be a great introduction for me to come into the business. And somewhere I felt like I could make a direct and immediate impact. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember necessarily where I was sitting or where the phone call took place, but I said, (laughs) that makes sense. So it was, it was the perfect transition and going from being out of the business for that eight or nine years had given me the ability and kind of the confidence to say, okay, I know where I need to stand. I know what value I need to bring. And I feel confident in the ability that, that I'll be able to do it. And I also feel confident that if I, can, if, I, if I struggle or if I need help, that I can say I need it and where I can know where my strengths are and where my areas of development are and feel good about making this my next career move. For me, it was it was hard because it became a new set of leadership skills that I didn't really have. I had never really managed a full fledged leadership team, you know, who had industry experience, and and now having to have a few more processes in place for management and accountability, and now building culture and vision. And so, you know, when you're small, those things kind of just come naturally. You kind of can take those things for granted a little bit, and then once you really grow, now you have to really be thinking about culture, like mm-hmm. like define it. Not just some concepts that you have in your mind, but you've got to write it down. So, you know, I think that's definitely been one of our success factors here at Kodiak Cakes, setting us up for long-term growth. So I think, you know, my mind then became more aware of how do I build culture? Mm-hmm. How do I think about vision for the company and mission for the company, accountability for the team, and then team growth? So my focus has become a lot more on people, you know, and then less on just hands-on day-to-day management of stuff. Thank you for listening to the Family Business Voice. Subscribe to our channels now on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, or Spotify to be notified of our weekly episodes.